Hey, what's up, guys, and welcome back to Retro Game Hall. Uh, it's been a very busy month uh, for old Jimbo here, as you just saw on your screen there. That's pretty much everything that I've gotten for uh, for the month of November, just uh, getting a little bit of this and a little bit of that, and uh, kind of got a lot to get through here. I've been very fortunate uh, this month just to get some really great deals on some stuff to add to the collection, and uh, if you'll uh, just please bear with me here, we're going to get through everything. I'll kind of break it down into segments, so uh, let's go ahead and see what I got. Okay, we'll start with these, uh, I guess you could call them micro consoles. Uh, these little things that you see right here are basically working Sega Genesis consoles, um, each with a different variety of games. You can see there's a, a Sonic one that comes with several of the Sonic games, plus Alex Kidd and a few others. Uh, there's a Virtual Fighter one. You get Virtual Fighter, Golden Axe, Shinobi. Uh, then you got this one with Columns, Flicky, Arrow Flash, and a handful of other bonus games. And um, each of these, these little joysticks and buttons, um, all of these things work actually. So it's really a neat little, neat little console. These things actually literally fit on your keychain and just uh, run on a single, is that AAA battery? And it just runs on the little plug, little uh, plug and play deal. You can just uh, hook it right into your TV and you're pretty much ready to go. Uh, these things don't cost a lot of money, uh, right around 10 bucks. And uh, there are more in this series actually, it's just these three were the only three I was able to get a hold of. Um, so I got these three basically for the collection, and I actually got an extra one uh, that I will unbox and we'll uh, check out. We'll do a review of this one, so uh, that's uh, to be continued. Okay, so let's move on to some Turbo Graphics games. Um, it's been a pretty good month for me in that department. I've gotten a lot of great deals. I'm just working out things with sellers and getting uh, little package deals. Um, I've actually got a few that were in the box. Um, I got Falcon, uh, one of the few flight sims for the Turbo Graphics. Uh, this one, I do not believe, came with a traditional uh, CD slip case. Um, I'm not entirely sure about that, but uh, many of the auctions I've seen do not contain the case, but most of them have the box. So I'm just kind of, you know, just guessing there that uh, that these originally didn't come with that. It was maybe a packet or something like that. But um, I did get the instruction manual and a little sleeve, sleeve with the hue card, so um, I can just get myself a little uh, CD case to throw that in, so that's cool. Okay, then we got Victory Run, complete in box. I actually already own Victory Run, but um, the deal was so good basically on the box. Um, anytime I see a box for that cheap, I pretty much jump on it. Then we got a couple of complete in case games. Um, since these aren't in box, we got Andre Panza's Kickboxing. We got Blazing Lasers, definitely one of the essential shooters on the TurboGrafx 16, and I've always wanted this game. Uh, this one is definitely just. It represents, you know, one of the one of the strong suits of the Turbo Graphics 16, which is shooters. Man, they were really good at those. R Type, gotta have R Type, man. This R Type was first available, as far as I know, on the Turbo Graphics 16 consoles. Later ported uh, to, I think, Genesis, Super Nintendo, um, you know, a handful of other places, uh, consoles like that. But um, as far as I know, it all started on the TG16. I remember actually playing this with a kid. One of my neighbors had this, and it was just such a cool game, man. It's basically just a souped-up version of Gradius. But uh, really cool. Then we got Devil's Crush, man. Uh, the precursor to Alien Crush, uh, which I also have. Devil's Crush. Uh, very, very awesome game, man. Very cool pinball game. Uh, it's very, just kind of shows off what the TurboGrafx-16 was good at, which was kind of the, the, the high stakes, high speed type of gameplay. And uh, the pinball games, along with the shooters, were where it really shined. Then we got Military Madness, uh, which I believe is basically just a real-time strategy game. One of the very few of those. Um, available on the TurboGrafx-16. Um, just uh, one for the collection, really. And then we got a little something that I just happened to find on eBay one day. Um, I've never seen this item before. I've never heard of it either. Never seen anyone else who has one. Um, I'm sure there's maybe some TG-16 collectors out there that have heard of this, but um, this is the first one on me, guys. This is the TurboGrafx-16 Encyclopedia, officially sanctioned by NEC. Um, just flipping through this, guys, it's basically, you know, exactly what the name says, the encyclopedia of the games, um, kind of up to the point, it says on the back here, plus complete coverage of the new Turbo Express portable system. Um, so, it does um, cover the CD-ROM stuff, because the Turbo Express was released kind of later in the console's life, um, and just from reading this book, you know, just kind of flipping through it, this basically seems like Turbo Graphics um, version of the NES Player's Guide, the big black book. Um, that was released uh, during the uh, heyday of the original Nintendo. This is more or less the same thing, um, just minus the pictures. Um, it does have a few pictures, but it's pretty much all black and white, um, no, no glossy color pages or anything like that. But um, it does give you a lot of really cool things like tips um, and tricks on the individual games, little uh, little insider uh, information to, to help you along with the game. So very, very cool, man. I got this for a very low price, 
and the book itself is in phenomenal shape, man. So this will have a very, very special place um, in the, uh, the reference section of my video game collection. Okay, so let's move on to consoles. Um, I've gotten quite a few this month. Uh, this one I picked up, I actually already have one of these guys, uh, the PS1. Um, got this at a Goodwill for I think like 10 bucks. I'm pretty sure uh, that it works, everything seems to be there. I'm going to hook it up and test it, but I'm pretty sure it's good to go. Um, just whenever you see one of these um, and they're that cheap, the PS1, it's one of the rare versions of the original PlayStation and definitely the most um, just convenient of them because it's so small. Um, and it's just a really simple, you know, way to, to get your PlayStation on. And you can always use, you know, extra one of these. And nothing else looks good on a shelf, so real cool. Um, keeping it in the PlayStation family, um, I do have a regular, you know, original PS2, you know, the full-size black one. Uh, but I've never had a PS2 Slim. And uh, one of my local stores uh, just basically had a deal on one of these that I could not turn down. Um, reading up on these, I've heard that they're not quite as reliable um, as the original kind of brick. Uh, PS2, those are a little bit more sturdy, but regardless, um, this is definitely you know a piece of Sony Entertainment history, and it's got a really cool form factor to it. Um, just really sleek looking console, and uh, just uh, couldn't resist picking it up for the price, so very cool. And then we move on to a console that I've actually never owned before, uh, but I did want to get one so badly when I was younger. This was during the uh, kind of the PlayStation N64 era when Sega was still alive and kicking. Sega Saturn. Um, got this for a really phenomenal price from my local stores. They've had it um, in their store for a while and they just kind of brought the price down um, slowly and it just got to the point where it was low enough that I just I couldn't resist it. I knew I couldn't do better um, even online so I was like shit I'll go down there and get it. Um, tested, works just fine, plays games like a champ. Um, really cool system man, just kind of a kind of a rarity. You know it's kind of the, the other console in the N64 kind of uh, uh, PlayStation, you know, more era, you know, where those two were going at it, so uh, very cool stuff. So to go right along with that Sega Saturn, I actually picked up something that I've seen on a fellow gaming channel of mine here on YouTube. Uh, I mentioned him before, my good friend Metroid's Prime, Tyler, please go ahead and check him out. Uh, really cool dude, a uh, really great channel, really informative, really great uh, series of videos. Um, I actually picked this up, um, I think like a couple of days right before seeing it appear in one of his videos. I just thought that was really funny and I, I sent him a message letting him know that uh, that I had found one of these as well. Uh, this is the Sega Saturn Virtua Stick. Um, this is actually original, complete, unopened in box. Uh, there's a vendor on eBay that's actually selling these. Um, I actually took a couple of them um, off his hands, one for playing and one just uh, for the collection, uh, for a very reasonable price. And again, he, I guess he just has a pallet of these things that um, were never sold uh, for the Sega Saturn, where they ordered too many of them and they just never uh, made their way into customers' hands. So um, if you're a Sega Saturn collector and you want to get one of these, um, just um, search this on eBay, just um, Sega Saturn Virtual Stick. Um, you'll see it, and he's got a, uh, a crap load of these things that he's offloading. I would not sit on these guys because these aren't going to last very long. Uh, so go ahead and get you one if you're a Sega Saturn collector. This is definitely a must-have. So another thing I collect along with complete and box games is complete and box consoles. Um, I actually only have a few of them at the moment. I've got a Sega Genesis complete and box and just a few of the retro consoles and whatnot, but didn't have anything from the Nintendo side. Uh, so I was fortunate enough to get uh, this little item for a great price. Uh, this is the Super Nintendo control set. Um, this is just kind of the basic set. It doesn't come with Super Mario World or anything, but um, one thing that makes this console stand out is it's got the uh, original, you know, not for resale sticker on the front of it. So this must have been part of some kind of package deal or anything. And on the back, it's actually got the proof of purchase nailed to it. Um, uh, not to it, but stuck to it. Um, I really haven't seen many consoles in box uh, that are this complete um, with the original proof of purchase on the back of them, which is really cool. I've always wanted to get one of these, you know, if nothing else, it would just look really cool on the shelf, you know, next to all my other Nintendo collectibles. Okay, and finally for consoles, got myself a little Game Boy Advance complete in box. I've actually never owned a Game Boy Advance before, um, and I just uh, found this at a price um, at one of my local shops where uh, for a complete in box, one of these things, I just couldn't turn it down, so very cool. Okay, so we'll move on to a little more uh, modern, I bet, but I guess technically this is still now retro. Um, since the Xbox One is out, making the Xbox 360 last generation. Uh, we have a complete in-box uh, Bass Pro Shops The Strike, uh, including the fishing controller and the game itself. Um, seems to be in pretty good shape. Box is actually in incredible shape. Um, not really that hard to imagine since it's not really all that old, but um, 
a little secret for you guys. This is one of my guilty pleasures uh, for video games, starting with the Dreamcast. Um, I love fishing games uh, when they have the uh, the actual rod and reel controller that just kind of puts you into it a little bit more. I just I love those things. It's just kind of one of those things that I really enjoy doing. It's just you know silly silly little pastime gaming, but uh, still really fun. And uh, got a really great price on this and complete in the box, man. I just couldn't resist. So keeping with the Xbox 360, another thing I picked up, um, something that I've I've heard about but I've never actually seen. Um, this was just on sale for 10 bucks, one of my local game stores, the Halo Encyclopedia. Uh, pretty much everything you need to know about the, the original trilogy of Halo games, you know, 1 through 3, um, Forward by Frank O'Connor, um, Bungie comments on this thing, um, includes Halo ODST, I mean, Halo Wars, you know, pretty much everything. This is kind of the Bible uh, for Halo fans, uh, not including Halo 4 and the, the upcoming Halo games, but uh, for 10 bucks, you know, all the color pages and everything in it. I mean, just, just a really cool Halo collectible artwork, you know, some of the original concept art and stuff, so really cool stuff. So we'll move on to a little something different, a little small collection that I've been trying to build here, and I'm, I'm pretty much complete with it now. I've got all the games in the series. Uh, these are Sega CD32X games. We've got uh, Slam City with Scotty Pippen, and we have Supreme Warrior and Supreme Warrior Sealed, original in the box. There are actually five original Sega CD32X games. Uh, there are these two, there's also Corpse Killer, Night Trap, and Fahrenheit. And I've actually already got those three, so with these two, that pretty much completes my Sega CD32X collection. So just a little piece of kind of Nintendo collectability type of thing here. This was only three bucks at one of my local shops. Uh, this is a Captain N comic book. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember Captain N. It was kind of Nintendo's, uh, one of their first TV shows after the Super Mario Brothers Super Show where uh, Captain N uh, was this little uh, kid who basically got sucked into the world of Nintendo and he teams up with uh, Simon Belmont and uh, Mega Man and Kid Icarus and um, just a handful of other people and he takes on like Mother Brain and the Eggplant Wizard and stuff like that. It's just a really cool uh, piece of Nintendo uh, collecting history right here. And we got another Goodwill purchase here. Um, this was actually marked at Goodwill as probably will not function. You can tell by the colors of the tags. It's got a red tag on it. Um, it usually means that somebody's already returning and probably doesn't work. Uh, but it was four bucks and it looked to be in good condition when I picked it up. It's a little uh, Atari uh, plug-and-play console. It just runs on batteries. It's got Miss Pac-Man, Pole Position, Galaga, uh, Zevius, and uh, Mappy Land in its little Namco uh, brand plug-and-play. And I just figured I could take it home and maybe take a look at it and see if I can fix it. And really all it needed was I just took a wire brush, um, as I noticed inside the battery uh, compartment in the back here. Um, someone had left batteries in there too long and they had corroded, so I basically just scrubbed the corrosion out with a wire brush, uh, threw some new batteries in it, and presto, just came right to life. And uh, really good stuff, really good deal for four bucks. Uh, for all of you uh, Galaga fans out there and Miss Pac-Man, this is a really cool and really cheap way. Uh, to get to play those without having to collect those old game systems. Well that about does it for part one of the November edition of Retro Game Hall. Go ahead and click the link in your description box to get to part two, uh, where I go into some of the, the rare, more eccentric things uh, that I added to the collection this month. Thanks so much for watching, and to all my gamers out there, retro or not, game on!